So I'm trying to get around to different companies that are using contextual technology, and here Surf Canyon is helping you uh, use search engines to get deeper in the result, uh, get deeper in the results uh, by what you're actually clicking on. So they're uh, reorganizing the Google or Bing results pages, and we're going to find out why they're doing that and how it works and how it's going to make your life better right now. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Mark Kramer. I'm the CEO of Surf Canyon. Um, started the company back in 2006. I've been involved in tech and computers for almost as long as I can remember. Just for fun, I'll go ahead and date myself. Uh, first uh, PC I ever saw was in the sixth grade. It was Apple II, not even the Plus. Didn't have floppy drives, had a tape drive. Plus, record to record, press play to read it back. Um, I had the same experience at high junior high in Cupertino <laughs> back <laughs> in 1977. <laughs> okay, all right, well, um, and uh, I've worked at some, some large companies, uh, Compaq, Hewlett Packard, uh, but in 98 decided to come to Silicon Valley to get involved in the whole internet thing, which I think was a fantastic move and have been working at various startups ever since. Very cool. So what is Surf Canyon? What, what is it that you do? So Surf Canyon, uh, uh, we started the company uh, to develop a new kind of search technology that would transform your traditional static experience into a dynamic experience. Okay. And by what I mean by that is that uh, search for the past several decades has uh, Followed a certain paradigm. Uh, there's a box, you enter keywords, and then you've got a back end retrieval system that will sort through millions or billions or trillions of documents, however many there are, uh, produce a ranking, and then deliver a result set to the user. And that result set is ranked from the one that's most likely to be useful to the user down to the least. Yeah. And it's static. Uh, once the user is presented with that result set, uh, he or she may click. Whatever results they like, uh, if they go to a page and then they return, the results are exactly the same. Uh, if they're unsatisfied with what they're looking at, then their results are, are few. They can um, try to reformulate yeah. uh, by adding words. Uh, if they're fancy, they can add quotes or other Boolean operators, that kind of thing. Uh, they could dig. Go to page two, three, four. Uh, most people are familiar with the fact that it's very rare for people to go beyond page one, yep. let alone to page 10. Yep. I would imagine the majority of people never even seen page 10. I, I go even further. If it's not in the first four results, I do a new result, I do a new search, right? I might have something for you. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that in a moment. All right. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work to go beyond page one. And so it's just completely understandable that people would, wouldn't want to dig. Uh, a lot of people take the third option, which is to abandon. Yeah. So we came up with this concept where when the user makes a selection on the result page, we'll have, some, we'll have an algorithm that will look at that action and try to determine why would the user click on this result? What is it about this result which is perhaps unique or specific or in some way indicative of the user's intent that goes beyond the keywords that were entered. Yep. And while the user is out looking at this document, uh, our algo will run and we'll look at the entire result set. For practical, for practical purposes, we'll look at the first 100 or 200 or 300 results for that yep. and produce a re-ranking. So we, what, we'll, what we'll effectively do is say, if Given this uh, set of keywords that the user ran, if we had known before delivering the result page that the user was going to click this particular result, yep. result number three or five or number one or whatever it was, would we have delivered a different uh, result page? Yep. And the answer is most always yes, uh, because that click gives a lot of information about what the user is looking for at that particular moment in time. Can we see it? We can see it. Let, let's see what it looks like. This is, a, by the way, it's a browser extension, right? 
Um, well, one second. Let me log in. Okay, here we go. Um, our technology is delivered through our own website, surfcanyon.com. You can go to it, you can run your searches and experience what I just told you. Okay. However, uh, very early on in the company, we realized that a lot of people might not be interested in switching from their favorite search engine, whatever that might be. Google or Bing. Google or Bing or Yahoo. Yeah. Uh, and so we figured we could deliver this experience uh, in a browser extension, which uh, a user can install and then they can go off and here's the here's the page. I don't know if you're able to see the. Yep. Let me just uh, I'll open this in a new tab. Here, here's the page where people can download the browser extension. Okay. It's this big link right off the front. So here. let's do a search and see what it does. Okay. Well, it's already installed. So. All right. Uh, since you mentioned Google, let's go to Google. So we got search for. Uh, I'm going to search for the term dolphins. Okay. And uh, the reason why is because. In information retrieval, this is often used as an, a, a query which is indicative of a fundamental problem with IR search, yep. and that is understanding user intent. When I do a search for the term dolphins, no matter what search engine I'm using, no matter how much the search engine knows about me personally or my history or everyone in the world who's ever searched for this term, you can't know definitively if I'm looking for the animal Yep. or if I'm looking for the football team. Got it. And so naturally, what most all search engines do is they'll provide a diversity of results to satisfy somewhat whatever intent that user might have at that particular time. Yep. And so naturally, I don't know if you can see this, okay. So yep. naturally we're presented with the first result is for the football team and the second result is for the animal and then another for the animal and another for the animal. Uh, interestingly, I've been doing this demo for, for years, and the result set changes depending on whether or not we're in football season or yeah. not in football season. But that being said, it's it's always a mix, and it kind of it kind of has to be. The disadvantage of this sort of strategy of providing a mix is, on the one hand, you get to satisfy a wider range of intents, football or animal, but on the other hand, uh, you're going to have lots of irrelevant results, whether I'm in the one category mm -hmm. or the other. So let's show how it works. So let's say, for instance. I'm interested in the animal yep. because I'm going to the aquarium. Uh, what I would do is perhaps click this result. This is the Wikipedia result. And I'd go to this page and I'm going to inform myself about, about this particular animal. Yep. When I click back, uh, if you go to the Wikipedia result, you return to a Google search page and you'll see uh, effectively these are re-ranked results, these three right here, and they're all related to the animal. So you had, you basically got more context about the user and are able to re, uh, uh, research for uh, what the user is actually wanting, which is exactly which is, is information which, about animals. Exactly, which is why we call this real-time contextualization for search. The context here is the fact that I'm interested in this result, the second result for Wikipedia. Yeah. And so from page 10, from page 4, from page 4, we're able to get more animal results. I'm going to do another control click just to, if I were to click here on um, uh, this bottlenose dolphin result yep. from Enchanted Learning, uh, once again, we are provided with more re-ranked results related to the animal. And then another thing which we do, which I think is of particular interest, is should the user actually decide to go to page two or three or a subsequent page, what they're presented with is a completely re-ranked subsequent page. The subsequent page is re-ranked based on all the activity that happened on the previous page. And since in this particular case, we know that the user is looking for the animal, we're presented with, presented with a page which is entirely related to the animal. Yeah. Now, why doesn't Google do this? Why, uh, you know, why doesn't Google do this contextualization of re, or re, re, repopulation of uh, search results based on what you're clicking on? That is a, a fantastic question, yeah. which would require me to speculate, which is often entertaining. I love to speculate. Yeah. <laughs> it's rarely productive, however. I, um, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. The value is there. We know from actually looking at uh, our data, uh, we've, had, we've had the good fortune of having millions of people install our browser extension over the years. Yeah. And 
uh, every, every, every user is anonymous. Uh, there's no registration or login, and we have no idea who, who anyone is. Uh, but we are able to look at aggregate statistics to determine actually how well it's doing. And uh, we've run studies where we will turn off the re-ranking for a segment of the population and compare that to the segment of the population that has it turned on. And when we do that, we're actually able to see that on top of Google, like if we look at this page two here, yeah. we're able to increase the likelihood that someone is gonna select at least one result, sometimes by over 40%. Yeah. So if you use the click-through rate on search results as a proxy for relevance, I think it, would, it is fair to say that in many cases we improve the relevance of Google's page two by over 40%. I'll speculate since, Go ahead. since yeah, you did. Uh, uh, because you're making the first search result page more uh, interesting to the user, mm -hmm. they're seeing less ads. Because <laughs> um. they have to click through fewer pages to see the result set that they're expecting to see. Right? That's an interesting speculation. I would say on the flip side, um, you know, I, I would say that I think that that is unlikely, very unlikely, because, and actually, a number of years ago, I read an article, I can't remember where it was, where someone was speculating that Google was decreasing the quality of their organic results to entice people to click on the ads. Uh, so two things. A, it's just completely counter to what a search engine is designed to do. And yeah. I just find it very difficult to believe that anyone would look at it from that perspective. And then B, even if that were the case, uh, you, the, the better any search engine provides results to its users, the more frequently they're gonna search, the more things they're gonna search on, yeah. uh, the more frequently they'll come to your website to actually do it, and all of those equal opportunities to monetize. So perhaps, on, perhaps for a given query at a given time, that might be true, but across the, the, uh, the long term for any given user, uh, I think that's, uh, I, think, I think it would be just uh, financially a, a poor decision. How how do you make uh, how do you make money with this? Because I don't see any ads from you guys uh, on these queries that we've done so far. Well, no, and, and here this is this is this is Google search page, so yeah. clearly we would not monetize on that page. But um, we have our own um, search engine, which people can come to and uh, do queries, and we have a number of users who actually use uh, Surf Canyon for their searches. Yeah. And uh, we populate with ads from, from various and, third parties. And if you're using Surf Canyon, you get all the same benefits. You click on something and you'll see related. Uh, yes, this, the same, the, the sa our technology is baked into our own website uh, server side. So yeah. no browser extension is required if you want to search on Surf Canyon. We, pr we provide the re-ranking the same way. Does Surf Canyon work on mobile then? Because I know the uh, browser extensions won't work on like an iPhone, that kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. Um, so mobile is, is a bit of a challenge from that respect. So uh, I believe that there does exist uh, one browser, I think Firefox makes it, uh, that enables extensions on a mobile device. But for the vast, vast majority of users, yeah, that is not the case. So on mobile, if you wanted to have this sort of a ranking experience, you would need to use an app yeah. that had it built in uh, we we have a, we have one for Android, uh, so people could download it. Mobile's mobile's tough yeah. uh, because uh, in many cases the the native search functionality is built in to the OS on Android. There's a there's a Google bar right there. People are going to use that. It'll be interesting though when when you do move into mobile. Uh, mobile has a lot more context about what the user is doing. Like if I'm right. searching from a shopping mall, well, maybe I'm shopping, right? Exactly. So you can do this kind of re-ranking re based on where I am. There are a lot of interesting things about mobile. One is, uh, and the contextualization that you, that you talked about is obviously very important for, for search. Uh, if you're in a mall and you enter a product name people will assume that maybe you're shopping for it or you're looking for the store nearby, so you can definitely use all that. Additionally, with respect to the real-time 
contextualization that, that we're doing, which is effectively uh, an on-the-fly re-ranking of search results, it's also, mobile is also a very interesting use case uh, for two particular reasons. Uh, one is there's the limited real estate. So on, while on a desktop it might be easier to view an entire page of both ads plus 10 organic results and other links and maps and all this kind of stuff, on your phone it's obviously a little more difficult. So yeah. the real, since the real estate's at a premium, the, uh, uh, the need for delivering the relevant results is, is heightened. And, and the second is, uh, I would imagine it's the case for a lot of people, if they're using their thumbs to enter keywords, they might enter fewer keywords. Fewer keywords it will equal more ambiguous queries. And the more ambiguous query, the greater the opportunity for re-ranking it on the fly. Yeah. Um, how are you guys funded? What, uh, how, are you, how are you paying for this? We're funded very modestly. Um, we raised an angel round, a Series A, uh, a number of years ago, uh, 600K. It was a primarily colleagues, um, a, cool. couple, a couple industry people. Very cool. Yeah. Where, what's next for you guys? Well, um, the, the browser extension business has been very difficult. Uh, it's gotten particularly difficult over the last few years, and uh, all of which has absolutely nothing to do with what we're doing. Uh, it's the, the, the general ecosystem or business is just uh, has become a difficult place to live. It's hard to get people to load extensions. It's hard to get people to load extensions. Uh, there's uh, uh, the marketplace is becoming. I'm trying to use my choose my words really carefully here. Um, polluted. Um, it's uh, the the uh, the large companies. Uh, Google has been taking actions to make it more difficult to. Uh, for people to load browser extensions, yep. uh, everyone else has been following. Uh, there's there's some malware out there, uh, so it's becoming difficult for users to navigate. And so we have recognized this mm -hmm. uh, for for some time, and the we still uh, know we're, we're we're extremely confident in the ability of the tech that we've built to deliver value but we need to find new channels. And so we're looking to apply it towards shopping mm -hmm. and we're looking to work with people who have shopping search. Yep. Uh, websites you either, uh, e-commerce e e sites that have their own uh, shopping search, other sites that have, you know, that have meta search for shopping, uh, you know, there are many of those, comparison shopping, all those kinds of things. So do you have an API then that you can plug into a, a search on a e-commerce site? Yep, kind of thing? we have a number of APIs. Um, so it's, one of the nice things about what we're doing is that as a, a layer on top of search, which is kind of what it is, uh, we have the, uh, it's, it's more easy to plug into backend systems yeah. because we can plug our front end search intelligent layer into people's back ends, search delivery systems, and then uh, effectively live in the UI, which uh, makes integration uh, a lot easier. Very cool. Where do we uh, learn more about you guys and follow you? Surfkenya.com. Yeah. And there's a link to our blog, blog.surfkenya.com, where we post all the latest. Very cool. Thanks for coming in and showing Thank you, to Robert. me. Thank you, Appreciate and, uh, it. Thanks for what you're trying to do for search. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for your time.